Live from the Carl Chevrolet Studios in West Des Moines, this is Iowa Live. Welcome back to the program, everybody. It is time to head over to Eastern Iowa and check in with Professor Jeff Stein to teach you a little bit about something that happened on this day in Iowa history. Hello, Mr. Stein. How are you today? I am well. I am glad to see you survived the fair. You're looking hale and hearty and tan. Yeah, very. Yeah, especially right here from yesterday. It, meant, uh, it was every day. It meant the Iowa State Fair each and every day. Saw tons of viewers and listeners uh, from the years gone by, which was great to do. But uh, awesome things. And, and your name did come up a couple of times, Mr. Stein. People enjoying the Iowa Almanac. Saturday in particular, did you send people over there? We had three people mention the Iowa Almanac. I have a family, and yeah. they, uh, they do respond. <laughs> and they were there uh, on Saturday. Requests. Yeah, they all went on Saturday. One car. Yeah. That's it. Well, but let's talk about what people are talking about during the summer months. It's talking about baseball, and Major League Baseball gets credit for breaking the color barrier in professional sports. But if it wasn't for one Iowan that you're going to learn about today, what a cool story that might have taken a lot longer to happen. Why don't you enlighten us, Professor Stein? Absolutely, Lou. The fellow's name is James Leslie Wilkinson. Now, he was born in Algona on May 14th of 1878. He loved baseball. In fact, he was headed for a promising career as a pitcher until he hurt his wrist. So he then turned to team ownership and management, and that turned out to be his real talent. For more than 50 years, J.L. Wilkinson used an eye for promotion to support the game he loved in a number of unique ways. For example... In 1909, J.L. created a women's baseball team that drew up to 2,000 fans at a time. And he even had a covered grandstand built that could be moved around the Midwest by train in sections so he could recreate his own venue at each stop along the way. By the way, rumor has it a few of the players were actually men in drag. <laughs> but let's move on to the fact that by 1912, he had founded the All Nations Baseball Club in Des Moines. Now, that team was made up of whites, blacks, Polynesians, Asians, and Native Americans. And, Lou, that was quite unique for that time. Yeah, now, folks may not have known about those unique teams, but that experience led JL, uh, JL to be part of something that everybody has heard of. Absolutely. He was probably best known for being one of the founders of the Negro National League in 1920. In fact, he created the now famous Kansas City Monarchs team. J.L. Wilkinson was the only white team owner that was trusted by league organizers. And in fact, he even roomed with his black coaches and players when the team was on the road and hotels were short of rooms. And once again, that was truly unique for that time. Well, given how things uh, were in many parts of America at that time, uh, truly amazing. It was not only involved, but like you said, so well trusted. Now, how did the team do on the field? How was that going? Uh, they had to make room in the trophy case. Uh, uh -huh. Under his leadership, the Kansas City Monarchs won 10, wow. 10 league titles and played in four Negro League World Series. And they won both of the World Series they played in. 1924 and again in 1942. So that's a long space. So of time. they're like oh, the Yankees. That was they were like the Yankees of their time, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. He also signed a player that some of you may have heard of to his very first professional baseball contract. The guy's name was Jackie Robinson. He turned <laughs> out to uh, turn out all right. Iowa's baseball entrepreneur James L. Wilkinson, or Wilkie, as he was known to many was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 2006, but that was more than 40 years after his death. J.L. Wilkinson passed on this date, Lou, in 1964. How about that? Jackie Robinson, you know, was noticed and really put on the map because of an Iowan. That's what we love so much about the Iowa Almanac, Professor Stein, is you learn these different pieces of information that have the Iowa connection, which is so strong, isn't it? Well, absolutely, and we all heard about how Branch Rickey would sign Robinson to play for the Dodgers, but how did he learn of him? He learned of him because he played for Wilkie and the Kansas City Monarchs, and that's the Iowa that, connection. That is awesome. A great information like that. Now, if you want to learn more about things that happen on each and every day here in the state of Iowa in history, what's the easiest thing that they can do? Hit the website, iowaalmanac.com, iowaalmanac.com, or on the social media at 
Iowa Almanac. There you go. Professor Stein, you always enlighten us. You always teach us something. We thank you for your time. Have a great day, Lou. Thanks for the time today. You have a great day, and we thank you for your time as well. We'll see you back here tomorrow for Iowa Live.